ahí. Everyone, um, we're about to start. Uh, one more minute to join. Yes, uh, everyone could please make sure to mute their mic. That would be great because I, I see a few microphones still um, open. So to avoid uh, disturbing the presentation, it would be great if you could all uh, mute your microphones at least until the, the Q&A at the end. That would be great. Um, okay, it's one. So perhaps we give like a couple just like one more minute for everyone to join. My name is Julie, I will be your host today. I'm just gonna introduce the webinar and then uh, I'll give the floor to Gustavo. Um, I'll drop them up. Um, it's great to see all these people connecting uh, for this first webinar of this webinar series about the Crops to End, to End Hunger Project program. Um, I see more people are joining, so perhaps we can wait a few more seconds and then we can start. This meeting is recorded, so if you have to drop at some point, uh, don't worry. The, the recording will be available on YouTube, so you can watch the end in case. Um, and for people who couldn't join today, we're going to make it available after um, after this webinar as well will be freely accessible from YouTube and the link will be probably available via the CDAR website and also the Excellence in Breeding platform. So no worries if you have to drop. Um, okay, um, so uh, welcome everyone once again. Um, I'm Julie, I will be your host today. Um, just introduce introducing this webinar, which is the first of the series. Um, so the purpose of this webinar series is to introduce the projects of the Crops uh, to End Hunger program. Um, this one is the first one. Um, it's about facilities of grade and mechanization improvement. Um, and welcome everybody for this project update. Um, the meeting will be recorded. Um, talk about uh, various topics and country feedback and um, uh, success stories. And then at the end of the session, we're going to have a QA um, where everyone will be able to ask a, either written questions in the chat or uh, questions directly by raising hands. So thank you so much, everybody. And Gustavo, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Julie. Uh, thanks everyone for joining us today. So please let me know, Julie, if you can see uh, my screen. Okay, thank you. So oh, yeah, thank you. thanks, thanks, Julie. As uh, yeah, as Julie said, so this is the the first webinar of a series of webinar that will be organized by Breeding Resource uh, to um, to present the progress uh, on this uh, CTH. Um, uh, projects. Um, my name is Gustavo Teixeira. I'm leading the uh, the work package five under the, the BR initiative, and also leading the trial and nursery process management uh, team. Um, yeah, today I will provide. Uh, we we will provide. We we'll have other people, other member of project team presenting the update of this project. And also some uh, people, uh, the beneficiaries of this uh, project that would also provide their their uh, inputs on this why the, this project is important, etc. Okay, so yeah, how we organize the agenda? First, I will uh, provide some overview of this project. Um, um, the project team, Diego, Vinicius, Amir will also help with providing some some information on what this project will deliver, the strategy to have to 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 deliver the capacity development, and also the status of this project, the project update. Then, as I said, so some beneficiaries, Alec uh, would provide the update from um, or the status on the, those projects. 
the CTH projects in the, the, the NIITA. Nana Coffee would provide some uh, the same for Africa Rice. We also we count with um, Dr. Maxwell from uh, CRI. This is deputy director from CRI in Ghana, and also Godwin. That the Dr. Godwin. This is the he is this the center director for uh, food crop research center at Caro and Nijoro, Kenya. Also providing his uh, feedback. I first before I go to to the project. Uh, per se, I'd like to thank uh, thanks all the funders that uh, fund the CTH, the Crop to End Hunger. It's really important to have this um, opportunity to uh, account with these funds to help us to deliver what we are here for. You know. Yeah, so in summary, this project is about, uh, it's a 15 million project. Uh, the main objective of this uh, or, or the deliverables of this project is to purchase, buy some equipment, implement some infrastructure at key priority stations in Africa. And of course, also helping those stations to establish uh, service fees for breeding teams to use those equipment and infrastructure thinking on the sustainability of those stations. So this is uh, the summary of this project. So before going to the project overview, I'd like to um, explain or or give more th uh, some thoughts on what what is the our vision for a research station. I believe that all of you and all of us would agree that what we want are uh, research stations that are able to deliver high quality data, that have the capacity to support breeding programs, are accessible to breeding programs, especially in terms of costs, flexible to support multiple breeding programs, in some cases, even multiple crops, are able to maintain the infrastructure and equipment that those stations are a good place to work, have motivated the staff, are gender inclusive, are sustainable, environment, financially, and of course are also good examples for the community. To achieve this vision, uh, a research station needs to have proper infrastructure, have proper equipment, have well-established processes and protocols have proper capacity development plan initiatives and initiatives to develop their staff and have a culture of continuous improvement. We can, those um, waste or those things that a research station needs to, to do, to uh, needs to have to achieve the vision, we can group that in three components. Capacity development that deals with the, uh, or or exposure in the, the, the staff in the community of practice, have training, or they the staff operating with the standard processes and they have the mindset of continuous improvement. This is the capacity development component. We, of course, the, the, we can also have this, uh, the group that is really having the infrastructure and equipment fit for purpose technologies, improved infrastructure, sustainable infrastructure. And the other component is management. M managers or the management of these research stations or research organization, let's say, needs to, needs to think in on continuous improvement or managing through KPIs, man through metrics, uh, have uh, uh, an operation that can support multiple breeding programs or multiple programs. Um, adopting and accessing shared services is also relevant for, for a sustainable research station. Uh, if we categorize or rank the uh, research station from a marginal research station or a research station that has nothing until, uh, to a research station that is a cutting edge research station, to, mer to move from marginal to something good or better basically or what is the higher is the need for infrastructure and equipment to move even further 
higher is the need for more management. Of course, it doesn't mean that it's only here or there, but higher the need for infrastructure in the base and higher the need for more management in the, in the top. And of course, capacity development everywhere. We always need to have from different levels, different uh, type of uh, capacity development uh, initiatives. What are the key stations that this project will benefit? We did together, with, even from EIB, uh, mapped. We mapped uh, with the help from from. Uh, of course, this was an, a group of people ma mapping that. More than uh, three hundred stations were mapped in only in Africa, following some criteria. Criteria that is research, big research, CGI research stations such as IITA in Ibadan or Boaké or Kiboko in, 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 in Kenya, or even, or that not, not only CGR, but uh, research stations that are used by CGR, but also multiple crops or projects that we are already have ongoing projects, our capacity to support and um, some stations that are uh, phenotyping hubs. So those cr criteria, we mapped th those stations and ranked according to those criteria and selected 15 stations that are key stations for breeding programs uh, in Africa. So those 15 stations, uh, Kakamega, Kiboko, Ninjoro in Kenya, Shitetsi in Malawi, Chokwe in Mozambique, Uganda, Namulonge and Serere. Uh, and Namulonge here, we also we can also consider Sendusu as part of this because uh, the closer, but also Sendusu and Namulonge. We also have uh, Lusaka in Zambia, um, Gwebi and Harare in Zimbabwe, Senegal, we have St. Louis, Ivory Coast, we have Boaké, Kumasi and Tamale in Ghana. Ibadan and in Kenya, in Nigeria, and do, uh, repeated here in Lusaka. Yeah, those stations, as I said, some or have more NARS, uh, it's more NARS station, some are more um, CGR station. But in fact, those 15 stations are key stations in Africa. With those, in those 15 stations, we have more than 70. The, the pipelines or breeding pipelines that uh, form maize, rice, cassava, potato, sweet potato, um, yeah, or any, or maybe cowpea. Uh, yeah, so many, many cro different crops. And these 70 pipelines are the biggest pipelines for the, the, the pipelines that would impact the uh, more market segments in the in, in or bigger areas or big population in 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 Africa, either nurseries or trials, late stage, early stage. So all of those. Um, Hello, sorry if you could put yourself on mute, please. Yeah. Okay. So th these uh, investments on those stations have high potential to to improve multiple crops. Uh, so our goal with those fifteen stations is to bring them maybe in something around five years to a really high level. Of course, we want to be able to achieve that only with the city age. However, we wouldn't be able to achieve that without the CTH. As I said, so there always the need for, for infrastructure. You know? So, but how are we or where are we now? And how can we make progress? Um, so we have uh, in our, uh, in BR and even before in EIB, we had this breeding operation assessment. The assessment, what we do, is um, we visit stations and and um, and they assess their station capacity to on agronomic practice, seed processing, plant all these operational capacity. Each of these uh, categories we have subcategories. We have many 
we go into details of, of small items. For example, here in agronomic practice, we evaluate irrigation, farm management, greenhouse, field preparation. We evaluate all of those. For each of the subcategories, we rank the or we give uh, the station one uh, rank. For example, in this case, the station A is based on the assessment is marginal. Um, meaning that the station would receive uh, or rank for multiple uh, subcategories and uh, rank them from marginal to cutting edge. So we did that for uh, multiple stations, various stations, and in average, the situation in average is uh, some a, a bit better than others, but in average, those stations are basic. Okay, so this is the summary. To move to something better, as I said, more the need for infrastructure. It, I'm not saying that management is not needed. Of course, always needed, but more than needed for infrastructure because it's what what can bring them the capacity to 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 improve. Go further, more the need for management. Here in the infrastructure is the key aspect where where we need the CTH investment. So this is uh, exactly where the the CTH will really help the stations to to improve. Management, of course, as I said, is relevant, and we have some initiatives to help on that too. This is really the scope of the breeding resource initiative. We have uh, the some components. Um, for for example, we are organizing the as I, may, I mentioned before. I'm leading the the, the process, uh, the trial and nursery process management team. We have other process management or process teams. Uh, lab services, uh, breeding analytics, and also from, from the breeding scope, we have product development process team organizing all of those processes. Uh, in the scope of trial in the nursery that is relevant here for this uh, project, we are organizing, harmonizing all SOPs, work instructions related to trial in the nursery. And this work that we are doing in the, in, the, in the breeding resource will definitely work or help those stations too. And this already is, is already connected with that. Uh, so we also help in the Kiboko, the CIMIT team in Kiboko to reorganize their operational team. That is uh, to make that uh, more connected with the processes that we are establishing under trial in the nursery. Of course, we also have capacity development initiatives like we have training or lean technical training, change management uh, trainings and support. And, and all of those things, and also the not only those, but also the service or the, the demand, really the demand for these stations in terms of their daily operation is also, can also be supported by the services that are offered by BR and we will increase the service that that we will be offering uh, through BR. Yeah, so as I said, CTH is key for this investment. So I will ask now Vinicius to present exactly what will be delivered through this uh, project. Vinicius, are you there? Yeah, hi everyone. This is the Rocha. I'm in part of the breeding research team of Gustavo, Amir, and Diego delivery with these projects. Uh, but before, it's important to mention can you go to the next slide, please? Uh, Gustavo, can you go for the next slide? Yeah, thank you. Uh, so before, it's important to mention that this project is a continuous project from two other ones. So we start first in 2020 with the digitalization project, where we bring some phenotyping tools to help them in the field. Um, in 2021, we continue with this project we call mechanization implements. And then we 
specific the facilities of a great mechanization improvement project in 2023. Uh, can you hear me well, well Gustavo? I think, uh, sorry, this needs, I, mean, it's just, I think you're cutting off, so perhaps you want to turn off your video. I'm not sure you can actually Is see. Is that better now? Uh, yes, let's try it, like this. Is it better Thank now? You. Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, please interrupt me if it's, it's not good well, okay? And then I can sure. handle over it, for it, a mirror to establish my part. It's much better. Thank you. Okay, good. So what I was trying to say, this is a project, it's a continuous project from two other old projects. So we start in 2020 with the digitalization project, where we're focusing the uh, phenotyping tools. And then as well in 2021, we go for mechanization project where we bring some uh, equipments for the field. And finally, we are here, um, try to implement the 2023 first facilities of great mechanization improvement as Gustav is bringing us as a background. Okay, important as well to mention that this is a cross-center project involving all of the NARS and the CG centers, as well as some uh, universities and so on. And is a cross-crops project as well, involved from many of the priority for Africa. So having delivered uh, by the previous projects, motivators and so on, uh, as well, we bring some tools to analyze the soil, some weight equipment system for uh, seed analysis, seed counters, some planters, and handheld sprinters in barcodes. So you can see that we englobe uh, all, all the operations in the field as well as the processing. Now, more in, in in other kind of equipment to continuous intro of technology and quality types. So, so we are focusing some irrigation, approximately like four hundred hectares of irrigation project seeds and some harvest and equipment layers. Um, as well, we are going for seed process infrastructure upgrade in seven stations, and as well to finalize the digitalization process, uh, some printers, tablets, uh, scales, and barcode readers. Um, all of this equipment is very important, but we need to have a plan for the sustainability of all of these operations. So our main goal here is to facilitate as a research uh, team, to facilitate that the centers can establish a service some fees uh, for all those operations that these equipments can bring them, not just the over the these fees for to maintain that those equipment and equipments are of a great infrastructure with these fees that the stations can charge us. This is connected with the trial and nursery process that's a part of CG Center's initiative. Now I can hand over to Amir to talk about bit more about how is the capacity building unity for that. Amir. Thanks, thanks a lot, Vinicius. Uh, hello, uh, everybody. Uh, my name is Amir Najum and I'm the uh, operation support in Western Central Africa with reading resources. I'm based in uh, Accra, Ghana. I'll turn off my video for the bandwidth for everybody so that everybody can hear me clearly. So our approach towards um, towards capacity building is derived from combining the three major elements that Gustavo has talked about, the capacity building aligned with equipment infrastructure and management. And this is where we focus on community of practice and we're trying to establish this community of practice, working on competency training for the equipment, continuous improvement and lean methodologies for our operations and standardizing these operations. 
This again runs along with upgrading our systems and we do that with utilizing and trying to introduce fit for purpose technologies. And this has to and will definitely rely on establishing and improving the infrastructure to make sure that these fit for purpose technologies can be sustained and uh, well adapted to this type of environment. This runs along with management, of course. Again, this is this is where we emphasize on continuous improvement, centralization of operations, shared services, as well as operations and machine management. Now, our approach towards uh, capacity development comes in multiple forms. We have the on-site development and trainings during our center visits, and this is where the assessment that Gustavo has introduced to you comes into play. Okay, we address the operational aspects and the assessment gaps, and we try to work on these on one-on-one -on -one basis with, with the centers. We try to resolve any issues that we see on site, any technical issues that we can develop and provide also uh, on-site training for the equipment. We established during 2021 and 2022, the Breeding Operations Network for Development, else known as the BOND program. And this is where we had the BOND webinars, which targeted different aspects of operations and breeding, basically all breeding operations. And we had the BOND one-on-one -on -one where we had different teams participate, mainly with seed processing and irrigation and um, drought tolerance and we developed that as well for agronomic practices which we where we focus more on the rice programs okay to develop uh, uh, good agronomic practices along the research centers for for rice this is currently now under uh, review it's we're continuing with the bond program but we are redefining this within the breeding resources uh, initiative we also worked on the operational, ex operational excellence, and this is where we mainly target continuous improvement, we, whether it is continuous improvement training for the staff or for the, uh, the, the management teams, as well as the, the, there, were, there were some continuous improvement training of trainers as well that, that were done as long, as well as the webinars, which were uh, quite insightful to showing the success stories that we've had across different centers. We also have the operational workshops where we align our uh, management and how we handle our operations across the different, we're trying to align or maybe standardize things that we do or the way we do things. We also had the technical field days and trainings, and this is where we target more the equipment use and the maintenance as well as having all of this information available in the LMS or learning media uh, system that we that we have. This is to show you that we've been quite busy. Okay, so basically, if you look at this uh, of the timeline since 2021, ever since we started with working on the Crop and Hunger Fund, we've been uh, having one form of capacity building event or another, whether it is community of practice, uh, operational workshop or technical feed days, or even operational access or continuous improvement training. And we're continuing on along that line, okay? And we will uh, definitely intensify things as we move along and develop things across the different centers. Um, on this slide, we'd like to just show you how just some demographic data. This is where we uh, just trying to express that it is not only a CG thing, okay, not only compliance within CG centers, we also have uh, our partners that are also involved and we have been all focusing on the gender inclusion where all centers are mindful of that, hoping to improve more equal representation in all the centers. Uh, next slide, please, Gustavo. So um, regarding the crop and hunger fund, the equipment that was received once the equipment was delivered or and, and they, they've been delivered in installments in different uh, different timelines. So uh, once these the equipment was there on site, we developed three major uh, regional um, trainings and field days, one in Harare, one in Joro, and one in Ibadan. 
Okay, and uh, this was for the uh, training of use as well as maintenance of the uh, um, machines and equipment that was delivered, whether it is laboratory equipment or field equipment. And we will continue to do so. We're still doing that uh, during our site visits, but once the next phase of uh, equipment also is delivered, we will be uh, arranging for uh, the next batch of regional uh, trainings to, uh, to do that. Everything is, again, we're, we're trying to uh, not only uh, do the training on site, but also have everything available for uh, all the stakeholders in the toolbox, which was developed by Excellence in Breeding, and we believe we will be migrating that to breeding resources soon. And we also have the elements uh, where we not only encourage, but we actually ask and try to enforce that everybody accesses the LMS, all the operators, or everybody that needs to utilize any of the equipment that we have delivered, I have to do the training on the LMS as well and get the certification before they are to utilize any of the equipment. Without that certification, basically, they're not allowed to do that. Um, so we discussed a lot regarding the investment, the assessment, and the uh, infrastructure, okay, uh, among other things. But this also means that this, there's a lot of information there, and there's a lot of information across the different centers that we need to share. So how are we going to do that? We've been currently working on a platform to share information across all partners, uh, whether it is CG, DARS, uh, funders, etc. We'll try to find uh, to make accessibility to uh, everyone. This will come in the form of an interactive map where we not only have the location and map of the uh, centers, but we also will be sharing uh, data like the, the uh, assessment, some uh, demographic data or geographic data, as well as other relevant information that is needed across the different reading programs. Uh, this is in the development phase and work in progress, but uh, make sure that we are still working on that and um, we hope to develop this for the benefit of all. That's it for me. I will be handing it over to Diego. Thank you, Omer. Hello, everyone. Good morning or evening, afternoon. Uh, I am Diego Castañón. I am the project manager for this project and I am uh, based here in Timit, uh, Mexico, and I also I am part of the project management uh, team. Thank you. I will turn off my camera. So just to give you um, the, the context of uh, where we are, we have uh, defined three main uh, pipelines, let's say your categories of equipment. So because each one have a, a different uh, um, needs. So we have defined three three main categories, and uh, each one uh, has its own uh, pipeline. Let's say so. Uh, just to uh, share with you uh, and to be uh, clear, for next uh, next year, the idea is to start delivering the equipment, the field equipment and research equipment, so uh, for breeders and uh, stations. You, we uh, are going to start the delivering uh, at the beginning of next next year, and uh, and at the middle of the next year about uh, equipment. Next slide, please. Um, about seed processing, uh, also the idea, uh, the goal is to start uh, the uh, delivering the seed processing infrastructure next year, and uh, at the end of July next year we should be able to uh, start uh, or finish this, this, this stage. And uh, next slide, please. Uh, for irrigation system, that is the a little bit more complex uh, items. Uh, the idea is to start the commissioning for these items or this category uh, at the middle of next year and at the end of the 2024. Uh, we should uh, deliver all the irrigation system in the stations. Uh, just to give you another, uh, what, what we are doing, we are implementing business intelligence tools to share with you the status of the project. You will have uh, this information uh, open in a, in a public web page. 
where you will be able to monitor the status of the project. Next slide. Um, how we are doing this? Um, we have split the project in uh, in four with four um, centers. Uh, we are managing uh, the the procurement finances and, and legal uh, things with the help of uh, IITA, IRI, CIMIT, and Africa Rice. This because uh, th uh, they have. Uh, offices in different uh, stations or areas of F Africa, so uh, that's why uh, we are, they are helping us with this. And just as a quick uh, uh, summary, we have now the around seventy-eight percent of the items in a procurement process, and the twenty twenty. The 22% uh, percent is in engineering a uh, process. So that means that uh, we are on track. We are uh, also having some good advance with the help of procurement teams from each center. And um, uh, basically uh, that's the idea to share with you that we currently are in a, in a good track. So I, I uh, when, uh, and as I mentioned, yeah, next, next slide, please. And as I mentioned, uh, we are collaborating very closely with uh, procurement teams, legal teams, and project uh, uh, teams from CIMIT, IRI, IITA, and Africa Rise. You know, this because it's uh, they have the experience and the uh, present in different centers, in different areas. So again, thank you for, for the uh, our donors. No, to as uh, uh, Gustavo mentioned, we cannot do uh, this with our help. Thank you. Next thank you. Slide. Thanks, 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 Diego. Thanks, Amir. Thanks, Vinicius. So uh, as um, as you could see, uh, this is a project for for multiple centers, multiple crops. Um, is is a uh, a project that will take a few months to be implemented, no, but uh, but also as Vinicius said, is something that we have already is a continuation of of uh, previous projects, complement other initiatives too. So um, I'd like we would like to invite some people that uh, can. Uh, that are helping us to implement this project, working with us to implement those projects, and we also be uh, ben will benefit from those investments too. Um, so, as I mentioned, first one, uh, Alec. So, are you there? If you can jump in and oh, hi, hi, Gustavo. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, Alec. So I'll just introduce myself and then switch off the, the video to preserve the bandwidth. <clears throat> so my name is uh, Alik Mlenga, I'm with uh, IIT. I'm the head of uh, farm management and breeding operations uh, based in Ibadan. And I've been working closely with, uh, um, closely with uh, Gustavo, Amir, and uh, Vinicius on uh, these projects. Uh, IIT has been a beneficiary of actually the three uh, uh, the three projects starting from the digitization uh, program to um, the 15 station uh, project and the current one. And um, before I even get into my, um, my, my presentation here, this is uh, for us, from my IHS point of view, this has been driven by uh, the assessment that, uh, uh, that uh, Gustavo and Amir pointed to, um, and also by the BPAT uh, recommendation. Um, both which found that uh, we were actually um, marginal in terms of uh, where we were uh, as a modern breeding program. So they recommended that we did need some improvements in our facilities as, as infrastructures, as well as uh, mechanizing our uh, breeding operations. Um, did all this to help accelerate genetic gain. Uh, next slide. So, um, like I said, um, some of the things that we are trying to do within IIT breeding operations uh, to, in order to transform the, the operations 
is to improve the um, our soils and farm management. Uh, most of our farms actually yeah, the soil uh, degraded, and they do need uh, proper management for us to, for the breeders to use for their breeding programs. So our irrigation systems are dated. They need uh, improvements. So uh, no, stay there. <laughs> Uh, and uh, of course, we need to mechanize our um, the operations at the farm and breeding operations as well, and improve the facilities. And and then um, it's important that we centralize our operations, and we are working towards that. And and key to that is uh, that we do we do uh, build the capacity of our staff so that they are able to actually yeah, to benefit from the from the modernization. And um, also, it's important that we include. Um, uh, we diversify in terms of the, the workforce, uh, gender inclusion, and uh, all this has to be done using the philosophy of uh, lean, lean uh, principles, continuous improvement. Next slide. So why are we doing this? Um, I, I did mention about uh, BPAT uh, recommending that we need to do some things to improve our genetic gain. Um, the thinking is that we can actually improve uh, certain areas in terms of accuracy, breeding cycle, and selection intensity. Um, if we can improve how we are managing our um, our, our plots, uh, reduce the variability in the fields, uh, we can improve the data that the quality of the data that's coming from the from the breeding programs, and uh, also uh, we if we mechanize, we can increase the size of the programs because we are able to handle more more work. Uh, and also provide more uh, lines for the for the breeders to test. Also, uh, we can reduce the breeding cycles um, by using things like irrigation. That we can have two or three uh, crops or se seasons in a year, um, and also expand the locations. So all this, um, if we do that, it will provide um, a platform where we can actually uh, accelerate genetic gain. Uh, next slide. So these are just some of the initi initiatives that we are taking within, uh, within our unit. We are working on improving the soils, uh, irrigation, mechanization, seed processing, and growth facility, and also capacity building. And, and again, using the principles of continuous improvement. And you can actually see these dovetails very well with uh, what the CTH fund is uh, targeted for. Um, like all the equipment that we're getting, you can look at uh, you can see that it does fit in with all these uh, boxes there. So it's it's a welcome um, uh, find for from IIT's uh, point of view. Next slide. As pointed out by my colleagues before, we we've uh, received uh, equipment, and and some of that equipment is helping us to improve um, uh, how we manage the soils. Uh, we've got uh, tillage equipment that we didn't have before that's helping us actually to manage the soil more efficiently. Um, we have some uh, field levelers that we are sent out to us that we're using for the uh, for the rice fields. Uh, it's important to note that actually uh, IITA in Ibadan does host uh, Africa rice and we are providing some uh, operation services to them. Also, because uh, like I mentioned, the soils are degraded, we have to ensure that we um, we are using our uh, fertilizers judiciously. Um, we are not just applying for the sake of applying fertilizers. So we have some uh, soil testing kits that we are using to ensure that uh, we are only providing the level of, um, the, the amount of uh, fertilizer that's required. We are not over or under applying uh, fertilizers. So the equipment that has been sent to us is actually having an impact on how we operate. Next slide. Uh, okay there. Um, as you can see from this picture, you can see how this, this is actually a field in Ibadan. Um, the soils were really, uh, uh, really compacted and we couldn't have actually done much if we didn't have the equipment that has been provided to us. Soil testing uh, to improve fertility management. These are some of the impacts that the, the CTH investment is having uh, within IIT. Uh, we are able to uh, manage the compacted soils and improve um, uh, drainage. And also because of the equipment, we, ha we have the, uh, the, the facilities or other equipment to be able to incorporate cover crops because our soils are depleted in terms of organic matter. And also we need to manage our, our fields uh, uniformly. 
during the fallow periods, at, at least we can mine out the, uh, the variability that's introduced by uh, having small plots in there. Um, and this is something that we couldn't have done before we had the equipment. And it's also just improved the efficiency and accuracy of how we do our work. Next slide. <clears throat> then the next initiative that we are focusing on is improving our irrigation systems within IITA. And the equipment that we have, or rather the, the facilities, irrigation facilities that we have right now is old and Hello. it's prone to breaking down. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Go ahead, we can hear you. So we have three minutes, oh, Alec, please. Okay. All right, yeah. So um, we are looking to expand the irrigation system across the stations and also improve uh, water use efficiency in terms of the equipment that we have. Next slide. Okay, then. Uh, so in Ibad, uh, under the current uh, uh, funding, um, we are looking to expand our irrigable uh, fields. Currently, we only have uh, 100 hectares. Even though we have two, uh, over 250 hectares, uh, most of the breeders are reluctant to use the fields that don't have irrigation in them. So this is gonna actually expand the programs uh, in terms of uh, the number of fields that are available for them to uh, conduct their research. Um, we are installing a, a new irrigation, a sprinkler irrigation system. Uh, with new pumps and filtration, filtration system to ensure that um, uh, the debris is not uh, uh, damaging the sprinklers and we can um, extend the uh, life cycle of the, the equipment. Next slide. <coughs> we are using the same initiative uh, in uh, Sendusta, uh, but in this case, we are uh, installing uh, drip irrigation as well as a sprinkler system for the cassava and other crops. Uh, but also the idea is to improve the, the efficiency of the uh, irrigation system. Next slide. Then mechanization in general, um, I, I think I pointed this out already, the, 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 the status quo, we can't continue with the status quo uh, currently because it's time consuming and it does impact the breeding programs. Um, and also in terms of just the scale, we were able to actually handle uh, a lot of work. So with the new equipment, we are able to expand. We actually expanding to, uh, in, in uh, Nigeria, we are expanding to actually open up some more, some more um, farms <coughs> to ensure that we provide more fuel to the, to the breeders. Uh, in terms of the impact that the mechanization is having, uh, uh, these, uh, like I pointed out the other things, but also there is the safety aspect like for the sprayer, at least it's when instead of uh, spraying by hand, which is exposing the sprayer to the to the mist from the spray, uh, if we are using equipment like tractor drone sprayers, it separates the sprayer from the the person who is spraying from the, the uh, from the active incre incre ingredient. So that's helping with uh, safety and also just uh, uh, cost reduction. Alec, one minute, please. Okay. Slide. Okay. Pressure. All right, uh, can you then go past this uh, slide, uh, Gustavo? So only have one minute. Okay, so um, me mechanization, we have improved the field and plot management. We've improved the soil management. Uh, weed and uh, pest management has improved and also just the uh, repeatability. Uh, this such a slide shows the uh, drastic impact of, or rather the impact of uh, uh, mechanizing our operations. This is at our Lusaka um, farm uh, with the soybean uh, team that have implemented the use of uh, mechanized planting. You can see that it used to take about 10, uh, uh, 10, uh, 10 people three days to plant 360 plots, whereas it's taking two hours to use a planter. Well, the efficiency is uh, actually very clear. Like uh, you can even see from the picture in terms of this time. Next slide. In terms of uh, seed processing, um, the picture it does tell the story. Um, on the left here, we can see uh, the girls are using their phones as a source of light and counting using um, uh, by hand. And then, but we've moved with the equipment that has been provided now, we are, we've been able to uh, actually incorporate seed counters. And also um, they have a master there to do test weight and, uh, and uh, yield. 
Next slide. Uh, same thing in Lusaka, where we've actually incorporated the new equipment. Uh, we've improved in terms of um, efficiencies and shortened the time for processing the material. Next slide. Uh, in terms of uh, human resources, we we are exposing our um, our staff to new to the use of new equipment. Uh, Amir did uh, allude to the training that they provided in Ibad, and so um, at, at least it's it's providing a new career path for most of our our staff. Next slide. We are also actually more focused in or deliberately trying to uh, in, uh, include our female uh, um, staff. Um, like this is a platform now with the new equipment, at least we are trying to train them in the use of new equipment. This is something that we are actually pursuing a little bit more aggressively to, to ensure that we incorporate more uh, female employees in the use of the equipment, new equipment. Next slide. Uh, then uh, beyond just the traditional equipment that we've uh, uh, acquired from CTH, we are also looking at non-traditional equipment. Like we've um, we've worked with uh, a, a fabricator in the US to uh, make a, a planter for cassava and yam, and we are in the process of assessing this and providing a feedback to see what changes we can make. Next slide. So uh, in conclusion, the, the, uh, the CTH fund actually is having a huge impact on our breeding programs in terms of improving efficiencies, reducing the... Um, Ali, we can't hear you. Hello, Julie, can you hear me? Yeah, we lost Alec. Yeah. 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 So, thanks. Yeah. Sorry, Alec, we can't hear you. And yeah. So thanks a lot. Thanks for your. We are also running out of time here. So I'd like to invite the next speaker, uh, Nana. Are you there? If you so, please jump in, introduce yourself. Nana coffee in the call. Yes, we yes. cannot hear you, Nana. Yeah, we still don't hear you, Nana. No, not yet. We, we can see you, Nana, but we cannot hear you. So I think perhaps we move to the third presentation. Is it now? Oh, yeah. Excellent. Now it's working. I don't know. We can Great. hear you, Nana. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Gustavo, and apologies for the for the for the technical hitch. Um, so my name is Nana Kofi. I am a rice breeder based in um, Cote d'Ivoire with Africa Rice. So to start off my presentation, I would really like to thank you all, especially the donors, the funders of the CTH, and also for the support we have received from Gustavo and team um, to make our breeding operations much better. So going straight, straight into the presentation, could you move to the next slide, please? So um, I'll start off with a common knowledge that the world's population is increasing at a rate that is much higher than um, the availability of arable lands because um, those lands that we had 10, 20 years ago are now competing with, uh, with urbanization and also climate change. So um, that means that we need to produce more on a, um, a lesser space. So as you can see in Sub-Saharan Africa, on, on, a, on a global scale and among the major, um, major staples that we have here, consumption is almost always much higher, in some cases, double, triple of how much we are able to produce. So um, this has led to most countries being self-insufficient in most of the foods that they eat. Next slide, please.
So this informed the decision of um, the donors and then most city centers to have a real look, to do business, not as usual, but then to have everything and see where we could make more impact with the less lands that are available to us. So the rice group, especially Africa Rice Erie and Seattle had a think through and then had with the help of the BPAT and um, other stakeholders redesigned our breeding um, program pipelines and then also breeding operations um, where we were, we had a focus of increasing the rate of genetic gain per year in farmers field. And to do that, we were looking at key components of this um, equation that you have here, which I think is very familiar with everyone here. So focusing on the, the subject matter of today's presentation, CTH came in and then they targeted to help us improve our heritabilities and then also reduce our breeding cycle so that we could get a target genetic gain of 1.5% per year. So as you can see in the red circle over here, this is these are the areas that the investments we have received from CTH is helping us to improve our rate of genetic gain um, on an annual basis. Next slide, please. Okay, so starting off from a direct impact of the investment that we have received at Africa Rice, you would see these were how we used to label our fields. Um, I remember when I joined Africa Rice sometime in 2016, these were what, this was, was what we were doing. Until recently, we got this infrastructure, not only infrastructure, but we also received training capacity building and on the need to um, automate our, our data capture through digitalization. So we had some equipment in, 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 the, in the light of barcode readers, barcode printers, and then um, some supplies as well, tablets and, and stuff like that. So this really has revolutionized our, our, our data capture. Hitherto, we had issues with labeling, um, where you have misunderstanding, when you, you take data on paper base, we all know the issues that are associated with it, but those are long gone now. Our data capture is fully automated, um, and then it's given us a, a much cleaner data, and it's also saving time and, of course, money involved. Next slide, please. Um, as part of the, the investment we have received under the CTH um, from 2021 to 2022 also came with um, the test kits for soil and water. So before we had to go through our soil lab, we had to queue and then get our soil analysis done. Sometimes in some cases, your, 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 your results may even come in when you are almost finishing the cropping season. So this investment is a huge boost to us. It makes us more focused on how much nutrients we need to add. We have an idea of, of, of where we are, we are putting what, and it also helps us to um, 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 contribute to saving the deleterious effect of climate change in terms of chemicals and water use. Next slide, please. So here is um, um, one of the equipments, field equipment that we have received under the CTH. Um, this is focused mainly under the um, dairy seeded rice um, um, initiative. So um, uh, we are no longer doing the manual um, seeding, which was quite um, um, labor intensive. So we have reduced a lot of drudgery here and then we are much more efficient in the way we operate. Next slide, please. So um, when we relocated to Boake, our seed storage area was nothing to write home about. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a picture to show you, but those that had visited us previously would know that this is a huge, huge improvement and then all thanks to the CTH. So this is our seed processing and storage unit um, where we, we do basically everything, seed processing and, and, and storage. So we had, as part of the investment, a cold room that was recently put up and it's functioning so well. Um, so yeah, next slide, please. So here I would like to share with you the items, if you could go back one step. Yes, I would like to show you um, what we have received and the status. Almost everything that we received 
have been installed and it's in use. There was one item that we discontinued because as local supplier, we had some disagreement, but um, thankfully we are, we, are, we are catching up on that and in even a much better technology in the current phase of the city um, funding. So all of these amounted to more than one point, um, about 1.1 million um, dollar investment. Next slide, please. So the current phase of um, CTH has this in the pipeline. We have done most of the scoping regards to what we need to get uh, with the help of Gustavo's team, Emir, and then um, and, um, Diego. We have been able to raise the BOQ for our irrigations, and then we have secured some um, pro forma invoices for almost everything that we need to buy. So hopefully, we should be able to get these things in place as soon as possible to improve our operations. So um, with this, I would like to say huge thanks for the investment and the confidence you have imposed in us at Africa Rise. So yeah. Thanks, uh, Nana. Thanks a lot. So of course, so we will please stay in the call. But maybe people have a question to you later. Um, okay, so. Thanks a lot again. Uh, so uh, as I mentioned too, this is not only for the CG. I, Alec and, and the Nana represent uh, the CG centers, ITA and Africa Rice in this case, but we are also working with the national programs. One national program that, that we have been supporting and with the CTH and even with the previous CTH projects is the is CIR, CRI. Uh, Dr. Maxwell, if you are there, please. Hello, Gustav and everyone. Hello. Hey, good morning or good afternoon, Maxwell. Yeah, please. Floor is yours. Maxwell. Yes. So I uh, also like Nana, even before I present, thank the project very much for the upgrade on, on our facilities. That is really helping to change our, our, uh, our breeding programs here. Next slide, please. Yes, yeah, so in, in 2020, we, we, we signed an MOU with EIB, now breeding resources to, to modernize the, the breeding program. And then on that basis, uh, uh, the, the CSR institutes, which is CRI based here in Kumasi, where I'm based and Sari, we were assessed and then rec recommendations were made to help us to achieve breeding and op operational excellence. Next slide. Yes, so these are some of the recommendations. Uh, there are a few of them which were a little bit specific to the various breeding pipelines, but generally you, could, you, you can see those in those that are boarded where the areas where mechanization and station uh, operational support were, were needed. But also beyond that, on the breeding side itself, uh, we're supported to put in uh, uh, product profiles and uh, core breeding germplasm, and then we introduce markets in our mm -hmm. work. But this, this presentation will, will, will focus on the bolded uh, uh, lines. Next slide. Yeah, so on the digitalization of operations, we had all this equipment. And then because of that, we have been able to digitalize our operations. We now use the packet printers, the, the tag printers, handhelds, and then we, we, we don't use these kinds of labels here again. We, we, we now use the the digitalized uh, the labels with barcode. Next slide. Yes, and then we are also very excited about the equipment that we have released, just like other centers. We had the seed testing kit. We have plows, we have laser levelers, uh, a big slasher, and, and, and many more, both for our center here in Kumasi and for the center in Temali. Next slide. Yes, and then Gustavo and Beach were also here to 
uh, access our small facility that we 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 use for RG and, and recommended some expansion and some centralization of the operations so that we can do the the fixing of the lines for both Sari and CRI at our station in um, Kumasi. Then Sari will come back for the lines and we, we do the testing to together. So this is still in the pipeline uh, with uh, with the support for from the crops to end hunger. We are planning to expand this to be able to take care of the needs of the whole country. And, and then also for our, our seed processing area, we already have a facility there that, that is going to get an upgrade for this uh, project. So this facility already exists, but we are going to extend it to have an, a new construction area where all the things that come in will, will take care of it here before we move it to this chain, chamber for the processing activities to be completed. And then we have the cold storage here as well. So this is the plan for the new uh, seed processing area and cold storage, which is still in the pipeline and ho hopefully we'll start working on it very soon. And then also we have benefited a lot from... <laughs> Maxwell, yeah, you can go ahead. Hello, yeah. Okay, so yes, we we are the we have benefited a lot on on, on continuous improvement and and and, and training to, to help to help the staff have a mindset of, of, of continuous improvement. So in March 2022, Ame was here. We had a big seminar where almost 100 uh, staff attended. That, that, that was for the whole staff. It was a very interesting meeting and people appreciated it a lot. And then he spent two more days to do uh, much detailed training with the operations teams and, and especially our, our transport team. And, and even went ahead to do some practical work with them in trying to, to, to use the uh, 6S lean workplace where we sorted and sorted, uh, uh, set in order uh, uh, our transport section and, and on the seed uh, section. Next. Yes, and also in October, we had a continuous improvement uh, 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 workshop where uh, the resource people came from Erie and, and Africa Rice to, to train our group. It was very a very practical training where we used three projects on on improvement of our seed store and 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 and, and other projects to do very practical training on on, on continuous improvements. That one as well was very successful. And, and as you can see, we, we make conscious effort to in, in, include women in our, in our training. So it's almost always not less than 30% ladies in there. Next. Yeah, so the impact of this, of this uh, uh, equipment support and, and training, uh, op, uh, operations, uh, such as uh, field labels, data taking have all been digitalized. The, the seed for our trials, we now pack them. We, we use the seed counter to count and then pack the seed for the various trials. And then the speed of our breeding operations have, 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 have increased. And then our temporary seed store has been very well organized. And then at the level of management, we, we have adopted the success new workplace uh, 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 protocols. And, be, and because of that, we have set up a maintenance tax force, which organizes a lean event um, every month. You can see one advert here on the right where 
on, on at the end of every month, we start from the various offices. We, we make sure we are sorting, we set in order, we standardize things and make, uh, make sure everywhere is well set and clean. And also our, our, our transport session has been cleaned up and organized. So that is the major impact for us. Next slide. Yes, yeah, so in conclusion, the equipment support from the uh, close to end hangar projects is helping to improve plant breeding in Ghana. Already uh, for us in, in the rice breeding program, we have been able to develop very good lines within two years because of the operational improvement and, and also the marker assisted uh, support that we, we got. And then the training in the lane methodologies has helped to give our staff a mindset of con continuous improvement. And that is very, very, it's, it's very important for us. The mindset changes everything. You, you can't quantify that, that benefit. And we are very grateful for, for that training. Next. So with this, I will thank Bish and Amer, Gustavo, uh, Sanjay, who even recently also organized a breeding modernization program with us for people in Africa. And then also Manileo and uh, Anna, have, they have supported us with the with the marker assisted work and the and the genotyping work in general. So excellence in breeding, now breeding resource and all the other uh, uh, organizations list, listed here have been of great support. But thank you so much. Well, thanks, uh, Maxwell. Thanks a lot. It's a pleasure working with uh, a, a, a group of, of uh, people like you and your team. So it's really good. And just to 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 help you, and of course, not all EIB it's BR. We also have uh, good uh, people from uh, that is part of ABI. That is also uh, some people from EIB that was is now working with ABI, but we work together. It's the same team. Thanks a lot. So uh, we we would like now to invite the the next speaker. That is uh, Dr. Godwin. Uh, Godwin, I believe that you would like to share your screen, correct? Godwin, are you there? Yeah, his, his screen is shared. I'm sharing the screen. I don't know if he, he, he said that he would prefer okay. to share his screen. Godwin, can you hear us? He's muted. I can see. So let me. So I don't know, maybe Diego or Julie, can you uh, unmute Godwin? Yeah. I, I can see Godwin on my screen. I am asking him to uh, unmute, but it doesn't seem to work. Um, so, um, Godwin, if you can hear us, um, you're muted. I'm just going to send a quick message to the chat. Godwin, please try to unmute yourself. Yeah, that doesn't seem to work. Um, yeah, now we can, I think. Oh, um, here it is. Yeah. Godwin, can you hear us? Hello? Yeah, we can hear you, Godwin. Hello? Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh. We, no, we can hear you. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you, Godwin. Please. Okay, so then maybe I could just proceed on. Uh, thank you so much, Gustavo. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Godwin Masharia, uh, the center director of the Karajoro Center, but also the, the lead with breeder. Karajoro Center is one of in Cairo, and is the National Center for Wheat, but also hosts the CIMIT Wheat Research. 
uh, but also most importantly, the International Wheat Rust screen, Screening Platform. So I'm happy to take you through the journey. We've worked together with the organization improvement uh, at the center. Please, next. Uh, so basically, yes, I want to spend a se few seconds just to make to reflect on the Kenyan wheat, uh, the status, and the, then the, the breeding program where we are, or at least what is our goal. And basically, take you through some victorious just to illustrate the journey we've been working together in terms of the upgrade and the mechanization. And towards the end, then identify a few out outcomes that has uh, happened because of this engagement. Next. So quickly on this uh, uh, slide, most importantly is there on the left, just to appreciate uh, the gap, the, 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 the production versus the demand for wheat in the country. Uh, the supply is really low, as the green curve down there shows. We have really the demand, which is really increasing by the day. So that today the country is importing up to six times uh, its production for wheat. And it's because of many, many challenges. I don't really want to dwell on that, but maybe maybe just to mention again that uh, Kenya sits or in, in a region that has a hotspot for us, like many of us who work with the wheat, uh, uh, with the wheat community already know. Next. And uh, so, the goal of our program is uh, to work with our partners and we are excited about, for example, this initiative so that we, uh, to, we, we, we contribute to developing and catalyzing adoption of farmer preferred, market demanded, trailer smart wheat varieties for the country as co contextualized in, in the program's uh, product uh, targets. Of course, the aim is uh, like any other more breeding program is to try and reduce the breeding cycle, uh, try to, you know, bulk seeds and, and make those available to the farmers, especially the small scale farmers. And indeed, like I mentioned earlier, try to, to reduce or contribute to reducing the country's supply demand gap. Next, please. Uh, so yes, we have been walking this path, uh, uh, like uh, other speakers already have said for a program, working the with the CIMI team, we started the need assessment uh, as, as shown in that chart or that, that, uh, that uh, picture. Please, next. Next, next please. Most of this will be pictorial just to give you a test. But uh, as it was mentioned earlier, the focus on uh, for the program was on those main areas. Uh, this is already what I said. Uh, Really practice where we now the issue of seed, you know, in terms of storage, processing, uh, and so forth, like conditioning, the planting, how we do it, the harvesting, the phenotyping, uh, data capture, and like it has been said, uh, several uh, also building a culture of continuous improvement uh, uh, with the identification of key performance indicators along the way. Next, please. Uh, so yes, after that assessment, a report came through, uh, and uh, so the list we were able to go through together with the, with the team from CIMIT. And next. And the report indeed identified the uh, key investment uh, gaps or needs as listed there. Uh, those in green are those already that have been delivered at the center. Uh, the ones in, in, in red, are the ones uh, in Asia's area that uh, in, the, in the phase three, including the education upgrade, the discussions are on. You've done a bit of uh, you know, the mapping and identifying which fields, uh, the tractor there, the planter, the seed dryers, the warehouse upgrade. Uh, that's why we do our seed uh, processing, especially the early generation seeds, the core storage, the, the pressure, and the experimental plot uh, combine. So those in red are uh, what are coming up in phase, phase three, uh, in 2023, this year, maybe next year. Next, please. 
so generally again these are uh, pictorials just to to illustrate uh, the, the, the the equipments and the machines that you received right there uh, we have labor packet printers we have the handhelds uh, that already uh, you know uploaded the field book up we have seat counters we have a moisture meter next Next, please. We also have a, we received a soil soil testing kit, uh, a mower, a rotavator, a power harrow, multiple plug. Next. Next, please. And so after we received all those, uh, what followed was a training, as I said earlier. At is uh, on this slide, you can see that you had. Uh, this training that happened in July 2021. Uh, initial, this was the first way to introduce us to the digital digi digital equipment, like uh, the, 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 the counters and the, 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 the field book and all that, that kind of thing. Next, please. And so again, this shows uh, uh, the training uh, that was uh, led here by the excellence and ingredient team. Uh, again, on how to use these pieces of equipment uh, most efficiently, uh, and including uh, you know, calibration and uh, issues to do, for example, with uh, maintenance. Next. You could see that uh, uh, these are some of the trainees uh, for that particular training, uh, some of my team members, including uh, Practice out in the field uh, with the, uh, the, data, the handheld. Again, trying to understand how to use the field book. Next. And then again to illustrate uh, another training that uh, happened uh, for the for the, the program, the team members uh, of the program, but also involved uh, a few other East African. Uh, countries that also benefiting from this initiative, Malawi, I guess uh, this was mentioned earlier. This particular meeting uh, happened in September 2022 at, at Njoro, at the center. And uh, it's a bit skewed yet, but at least we had uh, a presentation and, uh, and also quite a team of uh, men in training. Next. Again, uh, just to illustrate in picture, uh, the training will involve again assembly of the equipment uh, uh, as shown there. Next. The rotavator, again, in the same assembly, uh, the trainees are there. Again, this is uh, members of the team and also are drawn from West Africa uh, during that training. Next. The seed, the, the micro seeder again. Uh, uh, participants have been, uh, you know, uh, advised on how to handle and how to use the micro seeder or the rope planter for that matter. Next, uh, yes, how to use the micro seeder. Next, please. Uh, these are basically pictorial again to illustrate uh, the training. Next. The multiple plow. Uh, again, uh, for the program, we had not had this kind of equipment yet. So again, how to assemble. Uh, then after that, now the, we have gotten down to the routine use of those equipment after the training. You could see these are the team members in the lab, the technicians, again, using the seed counter there, as opposed to early on where they have to count seeds. Next. We are ready now can use the, you know, the, the, the barcode, the, the labels, you can be able to print out those easily. And especially where you have a large number of jumpers in, especially for the CMIT and also for the CARO program, the labeling in there. Uh, next. Next, please. Uh, next. 
again, uh, sh uh, uh, sh illustrating the use of the power hurdle. You're using that already. Next, the, rot the, the rotavator. Next. And this has helped us now really, uh, you know, structure our seed beds in a very efficient way, uh, in a way that uh, uh, is available for, 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 for use. Uh, then uh, we have had this, the soil testing kit that you're able to use uh, and, and for our soils at the center, but also you're able to create awareness about generally the, the, the usefulness or the value of soil testing services. For example, in this case, we had a, a, a recent agricultural, agricultural show. We are talking about soil testing in general and using this particular piece of equipment to, to, to talk about this and the importance of soil testing. Next. Next, please. Uh, and so, uh, uh, given uh, this path, I I must recognize that uh, because of these equipment and machines, uh, it is true that uh, this has helped increase efficiency in the way we do our our research, timeliness in implementing our scheduled research activities. Uh, it has become probably much easier. Uh, to allocate uh, building sources, including uh, researchers and technicians time. Digitization equipment uh, has enabled faster, broader and simultaneous access to data as opposed to where you have been using, you know, you know, uh, uh, files and things like that. Uh, we also believe that with digitization, this has helped to, to an extent with data security, because more often than not, uh, the traditional classical files uh, get lost. Uh, are not handled very well. Next. So, Max, so, uh, Godwin, if you can finish, we would like to open that for questions. So, please. Sure. So, then uh, in this slide, I was just to say that our program uh, appreciates that with this investment, overall, this is a, a boost to uh, observation of genetic gain in farmers' fields. We would want to tie that gap that I introduced by talking about uh, the, the supply demand gap. Next. Next, please. Uh, so, yes, with that background, I must also join my colleagues uh, on behalf of the Caro Management, on behalf of our, our wheat breeding program, our partners, including, uh, of course, CIMIT that we host at the center. We would want to thank. Uh, the, the team for moving together with this this initiative, but most importantly, also to to them, the funding agencies, uh, because of identifying this center and, and making this level of investments uh, at, at that. Thank you so much. Thanks, uh, Godwin. Thanks. Uh, yeah, a really good presentation. So yeah, um, let's open for some questions. I think that we still have maybe a few minutes here. Um, Julie, I don't know if you captured any question in the chat, but of course, uh, participants uh, feel free also to raise your hand and um, and ask questions to any of the uh, the speakers. So there were a few questions in the chat, but I think the participants and speakers uh, replied to those questions already. Um, these questions were from uh, Gary Atlin. Gary, if you need any clarification, um, please uh, let us know or raise your hand. But otherwise, um, there was no other questions in the chat. Um, so perhaps we can switch to questions from, yeah. Gary, you have your- yeah, There was one quick question I had. Um, do we have a, uh, that, that wasn't answered. Do we have a formal relationship with any Companies that you know, there's been a um, a strong program at IITA of support from uh, a buyer for uh, a research station and breeding program upgrade, um, and it seems to me that sort of having a a relationship between specific programs and specific com uh, uh, stations and specific companies might might be helpful. Uh, there seems to be demand for that. Uh, have have we explored that? Yeah, so you are referring to the Gary uh, relationships such as uh, the one that uh, uh, IIT has with Bayer, correct? 
Yes. Yeah, well, of course. Uh, this we 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 want to do that more. Uh, we have some discussion. We had some discussions with Corteva, and yeah, and also Bayer, of course. We need to explore that more, Gary. Definitely, yeah. Especially for uh, in Corteva, we had more the discussion with in terms of capacity development. Uh, but I agree with you. That's something that we really need to explore more. Yeah, there seems to be an appetite for it on the part of the company. So, I, my 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 guess is if you reach out, uh, mm -hmm. that there there will be um, possibility of, of uh, creating linkages. Yeah, that you'll have to be yeah. proactive. Yeah. So yeah, we we've been discussing with with both Bayer and Corteva, but we need to make that more tangible uh, and more moving rather than only from. Uh, discussions to more tangible collaboration yeah i agreed yeah so something that john sharifa let's uh, maybe talk more on how to continue with that thanks uh, gary for your input i see sarah hello um this was really great to see uh, all the progress um, that you've made already um, really nice to see the pictures of the different stations and hear about uh, how much crops and hunger has already improved. I have one question. So when you, when you started, um, usually when people started with presentation, they showed the breeder's equation and that that was a goal to improve that. So is it possible to, um, to, to get back to that, to see how, so if you say the efficiency or time efficiency increased, can you relate that back to the rates of genetic gain that you achieve in the different breeding programs, mm -hmm. either now or, or in the future? Yeah. So, yeah, there are some ways. Of course, we need to have data. You no, know, that uh, that would come. For example, uh, heritability is one important data. Uh, we need to have that really tracked. And it's something that is coming with the with the adoption of EBS, for example. No, and also with uh, this is one other other uh, important is uh, the throughput, and throughput means also not only the capacity, but also the cost. You no, know? so there are many things that uh, can can be related back. But of course, the improvement per se depends much uh, on if the those metrics were measured before, and uh, in some cases they we we don't have that really tracked. Uh, but yeah, there are ways, and and uh, we hope that these would come, especially when we talked about the sustainability. Is that also some of those things would be measured in terms of the processes that we are establishing in the, 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 with the BR and the process management team, the goal is really to, to establish those uh, KPIs that would also help to, me to measure that. Okay. I don't know if I answered your question, Sarah, but is a work in progress to really, really connect that better? Mm -hmm. Okay. Michael. We cannot hear I, you. I don't think we can yeah. we can hear you, Michael. Sorry. Sorry, hardware problem. I had nothing clicked up. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, great presentations and and some really great work being presented here as well. Uh, just following up from that uh, last one, um, really great question, Sarah. I, I think as the the lead of accelerated breeding, as I look at this, um, I think that the team that have put this together have done a really great job of of looking at what is needed to, to bring up the, the level of the station, et cetera. And to answer, to answer your question, Sarah, which needs to be answered, I think that the responsibility of that shifts over to the, to the breeding teams. Um, and, and that's what, and so that's what I'm doing right now is I'm just wanting to flag that I think this is something that we need to do as part of accelerated breeding is to, I mean, we're, we're already working towards um, a better defining for, well, the crop teams themselves are working towards better defining where they're at against each of the indicators um, for the, the different components of the breeders' equation. And specifically, uh, what we need to also do is look at how these 
each of these specific investments are enabling uh, changes that will that will result in changes to the the breeding scheme. So there's been a lot of talk about, like for example, Alec had the why, like he had the cycle time, the selection intensity, accuracy, etc. Um, I think the next step is to better define uh, for each of those breeding pipelines that are using these stations to be more explicit about what is the change in selection intensity that is expected as a result of this investment or the change in breeding cycle time that can be attributed to this investment. So just wanting to flag that um, to the breeding teams that are on the call, that uh, that's something that I think is really important to be working on over, over the next period to generally be better defining these indicators, but also in relation to these investments. Thanks. Thanks, Michael. Yeah, so Gary, uh, I see your hand raised. Uh, we are just a quick follow up to that. Yeah, I, I think what what we need is a before estimate of predicted gain based on um, the the breeders component elements and the after estimate. We should have every you know uh, for for each of the pipelines following the investment. It, it may be a little difficult to attribute. A, you know, a particular proportion of the gain to a, a, a particular element of research station upgrade. But, you know, if you uh, uh, improved irrigation so that you're able to uh, um, run uh, three cycles per year instead of one or two, um, you know, that, that'll result in a, in a specific decrease in the amount of time that's needed to, to fix a line. And that, um, but that, that's one component of the cycle time. So we, we really need the, um, the, the, the GI quantitative genetics group and the breeding groups to, to go through um, the uh, information about the programs before the, um, you know, uh, the widespread acceleration process began, maybe looking uh, 20, 2017, 2018, 2019, and how the programs were structured get a, uh, an estimate of what predicted gains were at the time. And then, you know, look at, at how the pipeline's been changed. What's the, the length now? What's the heritability at, at stage one? And it's really stage one where we're concerned with heritability because that's where a 95% roughly of the selection intensity is applied. And then uh, the, um, the, the selection intensity. So a lot of these, uh, uh, changes allow us to increase the size of the population we screen, and that translates into uh, increased selection intensity. So we, we should be able to put a rough number on what is the, the um, uh, improvement in predicted genetic gain resulting from uh, improvements to the research station and, change, and, and, and the changes to the pipeline that those improvements facilitate. And it, it, it is an important thing uh, for us to be able to present to funders that, that you know, we, we, we are able to see as a result of these reasonably modest investments, uh, say 50% increase in the rate of predicted genetic gain. Yeah, thanks, uh, Gary. Uh, you're, you're correct. So this is especially things that is uh, beyond uh, one specific breeding pipeline so that this need to be uh, seen more holistic by the breeding programs and and centers as uh, yeah so i agreed with what you said and what michael said yeah so let's work together to see that uh unfortunately we are running out of time i see one more hand raised if you don't mind i see i believe that other people would have appointments too uh, but if you don't mind maybe I kind of ask you if you can send your uh, question by by mail, and we'll do our best to respond. Anyone, of course, please send your questions. And and uh, as I said before, too, it's uh, really good to have this opportunity to 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 help to help centers to help breeding programs at the end to help farmers to 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 produce more food. You know? Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, uh, uh, the presenters, the speakers for this presentation today. So looking forward for the next one. Thank, thank you. Thanks, everyone.
Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks. Enjoy your day. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.